Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be doing my April 2020 NHL mod draft and top 20 prospect rankings. Now we're officially into the month of April and throughout the last month it has been absolutely craziness but just like the NHL a lot of the leagues that these prospects plan have either suspended play or have canceled their seasons outright. Which means that for the top prospects in 2020, we get the full look of their entire seasons, now if it concluded, and we have the final stats for all of these prospects in the 2020 season. So, when it comes to the top prospects in 2020, which ones make my updated top 20, and who do I see as the top prospects in the 2020 NHL entry draft? Watch till the end for all my picks and rankings, and of course, if you're just over by, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Now, just like the other mock drafts on this channel, we're going to be going through my top rankings. Today, I wanted to also expand it to 20 players, so instead of 15, we're going to be going through my top 20, 20 all the way down to 1, but these are my prospect rankings. These aren't necessarily a mock draft of where I think these players will go in these specific areas and these specific teams. Rather, it's just my prospect rankings, a sign of a team, to get an idea of, at least when it comes to the top 20, where these prospects might go. Now starting us out in the top 20 and first coming in at number 20, my 20th best prospect in the 2020 NHL draft, that's a lot of 20s. At number 20, I have Jake Sanderson, American defenseman who had a really solid season this year in the USDP, put up 29 points in 47 games. But with Jake Sanderson, it's not all about the points. I'm not as much of a fan of Jake Sanderson as much as some other people. There is a potential that he could go in the top 15 in this draft, but he is still one of the better defensemen in this draft, I think. And in terms of overall ability, using his size well and really being strong defensively, he can be one of the best two-way defensemen of this draft and when it comes to the overall game that really is a strong suit and now coming in at number 19 my 19th best prospect in 2020 i have maverick bork now maverick bork is a qm jhl center canadian born who has pretty solid skill set on him especially offensively i'm a pretty big fan of bork now in 49 qm jhl games got 71 points and was one of the leaders on his team in shinawinigan and i think is a guy that can really produce at the nhl level now there is a concern over his skating at specifically when it comes to his speed but if he can really work on that over the next couple of years I think Borg is a guy who could get upwards to a second line spot in the NHL he might not be a superstar but I think is one of the better Canadians to come out of this draft but now coming in at number 18, my 18th best prospect in 2020, I have Rodion Amirov. Now Amirov to me is the best Russian prospect besides Yaroslav Askarov in this draft, and especially when it comes to offensive wingers, is definitely one of the better ones too. Now the defensive game has been really talked about a lot, and it is good, but the offense I think kind of goes under it with Amirov. In 17 MHL games, was able to get 22 points, 10 goals, and was able to play 21 KHL games too, getting two assists for two points. Amirov isn't exactly the flashiest player of all time, but he is efficient, gets it done, which is definitely unique when it comes to Russian wingers. And now coming in at number 17, my 17 best prospect in the 2020 draft, I have Jeremy Poirier. He has the potential, I think, to become a number one offensive defenseman, but also at the same time to be a defensive liability and not do too much at the NHL level. And that's a problem with Poirier. I had him 14 in last month, and I kind of wake it up a little bit when it comes to his weaknesses and those weaknesses are his defense sometimes he can look absolutely lost in his defensive zone and that's been said and I do agree with that there is just some plays out there that look absolutely horrendous where he doesn't even try on the ice yet he could go out the ice completely lose his very solid skating and puck handle everybody else on the opposing team that's the kind of player that Poirier gets and if he really does shore up his defensive game I think he can be a guy that scores 50 points in the NHL can quarterback a power play at his very peak. Now going into number 16, my 16th best prospect in the 2020 entry draft, I have Jan Mishak. Mishak is one of the more fascinating ones in this draft. When it comes to being underrated, Mishak is definitely one of the bigger ones out there. In terms of high-end potential, I think he has a lot of it. Being a center and a wing, he is very versatile. One of the more younger wingers in this draft too, but one of the better ones in my opinion. Had 9 points in 26 games in the Czech Republic, the main Czech league. 
and in the OHL was able to get 25 points in 22 games, 15 goals. And again, this guy is still 17. He doesn't turn 18 until June. So he is a very raw product, but at the same time has superstar potential to be on a first line in the NHL. But now getting us started at the 15th overall pick and coming at number 15, I have Dawson Mercer. Now Mercer has been one of the fastest risers on my list in the past few months and that's been for very good reason. It with Drummond Bill of the QMJHL this year in 26 games was able to get 42 points, 18 goals, 24 assists. He ended up being traded at the deadline but still in 16 games got 18 points which for being on a new team is not bad whatsoever. Now Mercer is more on the older side of things but at the same time possesses some great skills overall. His puck handling is absolutely electric and topping that off with a great shot that is awesome as well. Mercer has all the tools to become a great offensive winger and the skating is not bad either. And now coming in at number 14, and for my 14 best prospect in 2020, I have Jack Quinn. No, not Jack Hughes, and no, not Quinn Hughes. Jack Quinn, the best of both worlds, baby. But in all seriousness, Jack Quinn is a very solid prospect. Definitely one of the more older prospects in this draft, but the production does not lie. In 62 games with the Ottawa 67s, got 52 goals, 37 assists for 89 points. Now, Jack Quinn is exactly what you think, a goal-scoring machine. One of the best pure goal scorers of this draft with an electric shot. There are some concerns over almost everything else in his game, but he's a solid skater, creates a lot of opportunities for himself too. Even though Marco Rossi has a lot of effect on those stats, he still is a very solid prospect, and I think at this point deserves to go in the top 15. And now moving on to number 13, my 13th best prospect in the 2020 draft. Going on to one of my favorite prospects in this draft, honestly, that being Dylan Holloway. Dylan Holloway is a solid prospect all around. Being a center and a winger, he has a lot of versatility there. Definitely is one of the more older prospects in this draft. You'll see a trend, a lot of older prospects in this draft, but Holloway is super special, I think. He got 17 points in 35 NCAA games, but Holloway is a guy that brings a unique package and a very good all around one too. His skating is very brilliant. The physicality is always there and very consistent. The defensive game is always sturdy. And I think although he might not get 80 points in the NHL someday, he's a guy that I think can be in all situations on the PK, on the penalty, on the power play, and can do everything for you as a versatile center or even on wing. But now getting into number 12 and my first and only goaltender in this top 20. Yes, that of course being Yaroslav Askarov. Coming in with 18 VHL games and 920 save percentage, Askarov has all the hype behind him. Even though I don't draft goaltenders in the top 10 and that's been consistent for me, Askarov is making that a lot harder. The potential of Askarov I think is astronomically high and I would not be surprised whatsoever if a team ends up selecting him in the top six of this draft. And going just outside the top 10 at number 11, I have Noel Gundler. Noel Gundler these days seems to be very underrated with a few people, <coughs> Craig Button, <coughs> but I think is still one of the top prospects of this draft, and especially when it comes to European prospects, is one of the best forwards out there. Noel Gundler in 45 SHL games was able to get four goals and nine assists for 13 points. And although, like a lot of other prospects, he is more on the older side, those are still very productive stats, and for a guy who didn't get a ton of production, a ton of ice time, that is very good to see. When it comes to Gundler, the skill is just obvious. Although the inconsistencies can definitely be there, at a guy, at his peak, I think he's a guy who can be a first line winger in the NHL someday, and the skill will show itself throughout his career. But now getting us started with the top 10 and coming in at number 10, I have maybe the quickest riser of this entire list, that being Seth Jarvis. I don't even want to make a mistake here because I think Seth Jarvis is one of the best prospects in this draft and deserves to be going this high. Last time I didn't have him in my top 16, I think I had him in my 16th overall pick or something, around that area, 
But Seth Jarvis, the more and more I watch him, especially over the past few weeks, I got a lot more of an opportunity to. He just wows me almost every single time. Consistently amazing in the WHL this year. 58 games played and 98 points. It's just a complete package with everything, I think, with Jarvis. There isn't one thing that he's absolutely elite in, but he's just very, very good in almost everything. But now coming in at number nine, I have Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti is one of the more polarizing prospects in this draft because he scored so much, but when you really look at the actual situation that Perfetti was in, those points were going to come. Now, in 61 OHL games, he had 111 points. Absolutely amazing production. But in terms of projectability, I really don't see him as a super NHL-ready prospect. One of the big reasons of that is his skating. Although it is fine, it could definitely use some work, and although he has survived it in the OHL and has quite thrived, I think that's something that if he doesn't improve on, will probably get eaten alive at the NHL level. Other than that, the offense is good, but if I did have to really improve on something, it would be skating, and his play away from the puck does leave something to be desired. But now coming at number eight, I have Swedish forward Alexander Holtz. Now Alexander Holtz has been one of the most interesting prospects throughout the last few months because I had him at number three, I think, in November. Now he finds himself at number eight. That's not really a problem against him because he's still been pretty great. In 35 SHL games, he's gotten 16 points, and in seven World Junior games, got five points too. In terms of potential goal scoring wise, even though Jack Quinn might have a better shot, I think Alexander Holtz in terms of potential and really getting the opportunities for himself might be the best pure goal scorer of this draft. And now moving up quite a bit at number seven and finding themselves at number seven, I have Jamie Drysdale. In my opinion, the best defenseman in this draft, and I don't think anybody's really going to argue that, Drysdale just has all the tools in the world to become a number one defenseman at the NHL level. Now what really turned the page for me was his world junior performance where he got three points in seven games. It wasn't about the points, but how poised he was, how really solid he was defensively, which really showed what he was made of. But in the OHL, he was able to get four 47 points in 49 games, which for a defenseman on a team that does not have that many goal scorers is super impressive to see. But when it comes to skating, when it comes to IQ, when it comes to puck handling, Drysdale really offensively has all the tools, and I think if he can improve his awareness defensively, can become a complete package, not just an offensive juggernaut. But now coming in at number six, I have Finnish center Anton Lindell. My favorite prospect in the draft comes at number six with Lindell and Lindell just speaks for himself. In 44 league games, was able to get 28 points, 10 goals, and 18 assists. Was on track for pretty similar numbers to Capo Caco last year. And again, you guys know how much I love Capo Caco. Anton Lindell, though, just brings so much. When it comes to the defensive skill, I think he's the best two-way forward in this draft. When it comes to defensive positioning and IQ, he's exceptional in that area. And although he might not have huge upside of getting 100 points one day. He's a guy that I think can reach 80 and be a supreme defensive shutdown guy, which for the right team can provide so much value. But now we're getting us started with the top five and coming at number five, I have Austrian stud. Marco Rossi. One of my favorite offensive superstars in this draft just showcased himself more and more as the season went by. 56 games played of Ottawa, 39 goals, 81 assists for 120 points. Outscored Alexi Lafreniere, outscored Quinton Byfield, and everybody prospect-wise in the CHL was just absolutely brilliant. And that's not a fluke either. Offensively, Marco Rossi is about as good as you could hope for. Skating-wise is just is pure bliss. The puck skills are flawless, and the IQ is insane for Rossi. Almost always makes the right decision offensively. Defensively, he is very solid too. Although he isn't up to the likes of Anton Lindell, can definitely provide a lot of value in his own end, which for how much offense he already is making is super valuable as well. And now coming in at number four, and for my four spots, I have the German center himself, the man, the myth, the legend, 
Tim Stutzla. No, it is not Tim Stutzla, as I've been saying for like the past year. It is Tim Stutzla, and I finally got the confidence to actually pronounce that. I know I'm probably saying it wrong, but either way, he is absolutely fantastic. Now, Stutzla has been one of the more underrated prospects throughout the year, but after the World Juniors, finally he started to get the recognition that he deserved. Coming in number four, in the DEL, 41 games played and 34 points in a very professional men's league with some great competition. Stutzla was able to rise to the competition and be better than it too. In the World Juniors as well, got five points in five games played, being a serious MVP alongside Maurice Sider for Team Germany. Although Stutzla, I don't think, is the best prospect in this draft, in terms of high-end offensive upside, is definitely one of the best available. Now, speaking of offensive upside, coming at number three, I have Lucas Raymond. In my opinion, Lucas Raymond is the best European player in this draft. Now, there is not that much of a gap between him and Tum Stutzla, but Raymond takes the cake for me. In 33 SHL games, got four, uh, four goals, six assists for 10 points. In the World Juniors, got four points in seven games. But Raymond is one of the more young prospects in this draft, and that does come along with it, especially in the top 10, he's definitely one of the most young players there. But Raymond, in terms of high-end potential, just oozes it, man. In terms of puck skills, in terms of hockey IQ, it really is all there for Raymond, and he has such great skating on top of that. Defensively, does not skip out on a shift either, is very responsible, and again, he is more on the younger side, but in terms of high-end potential and what you're getting, and to me, that's a top six NHL winger at the very least. Now, coming in at number two between Lafreniere and Quinton Byfield, I'm going to put the quintessential center of the draft at number two, that being Quinton Byfield. Now, some people will have Tim Stutzla ahead of him, and I can see why, but to me, Quinton Byfield just offers so much that is very uncommon in the draft. He's six foot four, but provides so much skill too. 82 points in 45 games. And people do forget that he's one of the youngest pros prospects in this draft too, being an August birthday. I think if he was dra or if he was born a week later, he would be eligible for 2021 and we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But he still performed very, very good and at one point in time was a two point per game in the OHL. Some people will also go against him saying he didn't even perform all that great against the top OHL teams. Yet, according to Draft Look on Twitter, Quinton Byfield had 12 points in seven games against the top five OHL teams, and against the top five defensive teams had nine points in seven games as a 17-year-old. I still think that's pretty good. But now coming in at number one, the best prospect in the 2020 draft, and no, it is not Caden Gooley, it is Alexi Lafreniere. Coming from October, no movement, to April, number one consistently is Lafreniere, and he just proves to be the best prospect in this draft, time in and time out. 112 QM JHL points in 52 games, and was Canada's MVP in the World Juniors, 10 points in five games played. Alexi Lafreniere just rises up to the level and consistently is amazing. He is the complete package. Puck skills, IQ, defensive play, drive, wharf ethic. It is all supreme with Lafreniere. He deserves go number one and whatever team ends up being lucky enough to draft first overall will be friggin' sprinting to the draft podium like they've never done before. But that is my top 20 prospect rankings here today. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this one. Of course, if you guys are stopping by, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell for more videos just like this one. Of course, with this top 20, I need to hear your guys' thoughts down in those comments down below. Let me know what you agree and disagree with, and also let me know what your prospect rankings are for the 2020 NHL Draft. Of course, share this video with your friends, get the rankings out there, and click on this card to watch all of my 2021 NHL Draft content. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you guys next video or stream. I'm honestly not sure when the next rankings are going to be, but I'll keep you guys updated. Goodbye.